So I'm Dan Thompson from the Large Carnivore Section of Wyoming Game and Fish, and I'm going to give this talk for Dusty Lassiter. Uh, most of you know Dusty, he's more eloquent than I am and funnier than I am, but I'll do my best shot at doing this. Um, this program, this Bearwise Community Program, is what we call it. The actual Bearwise, the name, it's been in, this is the 10th year it's been in place. Uh, we've been working on IME efforts uh, within the game and fish for decades, uh, since the 70s when we started assisting with management and monitoring of grizzly bears. And so uh, this talk is, is mostly about what Dusty's done, but um, it's our, our section, our large carnivore section is, is devoted to managing and monitoring large carnivores throughout the state. One of the major things we deal with is grizzly bears, obviously. And uh, all of our personnel are expected to be able to convey all the information and educational components of what we do, what's important about grizzly bears, how we manage grizzly bears, why we manage grizzly bears, how we monitor bears. They need to be able to convey that to the public. They also need to be able to catch bears. They need to be able to verify what bears killing. So they're multifaceted, they're scientists, and they are creative too. Scientists can be creative. So, all right, I'll some more. Uh, so when the, the program was started, is it okay if I move around? Um, it was primarily to maximize human safety. That was one of the main things that we looked at. And uh, I should mention, most of you know Mark Rossino, he's in the back of the room, he's angry that I point him out, but uh, he was, he and Denny Hammer uh, and were one of the, some of the people that really got this program going. Um, and then these were the major points that they wanted to do to discourage bears from residential areas, minimize property damage, minimize, minimize livestock losses, and then all of these human interactions with bears and human cause bear mortality. And so I'm, I'm going to go through, I don't have a bunch of media clips, I have a bunch of the things that we've done over the course of this past year anyway. And just to give you an idea, this is by no means all inclusive, these are just some of the highlights some of the work that our folks have done uh, throughout Northwest Wyoming, and well, not just Northwest Wyoming, throughout the state, the country, and even in North America. We haven't been, spent much time in the other hemisphere yet, the Western Hemisphere, the Eastern Hemisphere, but we're working. Um, we've given about 75 presentations, and that's a low estimate. Uh, that includes professional societies, grade schools, uh, a two school or two person school out of Jeffrey City, which is not far from where I live, actually. Um, you know, we really do try to talk with children. Uh, children are the future, obviously, but it's really great to see some of these areas teaching kids how to use bear spray. Yeah. Teaching kids how to use bear spray. We got different um, things that we use. This was actually a moving one. We showed them how to use it. We talk about the bear's role on the landscape and what's going on with the population. Uh, we do a lot of things with different clubs, ranches, professional organizations, groups like Future Farmers of America, things like that. We have hunter education courses. That part of that course is devoted toward grizzly bear and large carnivore ecology and management. Uh, we have the bear booth. Greg talked about this. Uh, we also have one that's really, it's really a great thing that you can travel around the country. Uh, we actually should have brought it here today, actually. Uh, we had uh, seven events in this past year. Um, people just love being able to go up and see. We have mounted grizzly bears there. We have a lot of different hands-on things that um, kids young and old, believe me, that they'll come up. And I guess we've really instilled don't touch to a lot of people because you see people come up and look at it. And then you can touch it, and they're all very excited to see it. And I mean, this is a, not just a little kid. This is a 65-year-old woman who's visiting Dubois. Um, we do a lot of educational handouts. Do more on that. Oh, can you turn the volume up? Okay, so anyway, uh, we do a lot of public service. This is Dusty last year with the Wyoming Game and Fish Department. Come with a partner and be cautious when calling for game. Carry and know how to use bear spray. Keep a clean can. Pack out and remove game as soon as possible. And do not attempt to scare a bear off a carcass that is claimed. Good luck, hunters. Hunt safely and wisely. So that's just an example of one of the PSAs that we use in the fall prior to hunting seasons uh, to just to, to let people know to be bear aware. We do a lot of print media. Uh, we do a lot of newspaper advertisements. We do a lot of press releases. Um, 
there's a perception of controlling what happens in the media. I think that's very difficult to do, especially with grizzly bears, but I think it's important to get the right information out there uh, so at least you know that the, the real information is out there. Uh, we, we, in the Jackson area itself, we, we put up information. When you have a captive audience in a restroom, it's a good place to be able to put something in front of a urinal for the guys. Um, uh, we use, you know, wherever we can, there's, there's been research to show the best way to put up for signage and, and to try to get that information across to the public. Uh, on the ground, uh, we, we've, we've got about 2,000 hangers that we made, these door hangers here, and it gives the basic information. And what, what's handy about these is that we, go, we do a lot of door-to-door -door stuff just to, to interact directly with the public and uh, not everybody's home, people are working. But we can still leave these door hangers here that give the basics, but that also puts our contact information there. So they know that we're available 24-7 throughout the year if they have an issue with a carnival. Uh, the state safe DVDs, I'm sure most of you have seen those. We've got those for, for all the county libraries in the state. We have them at regional game and fish offices. Uh, they're really educational. I can try to explain bear behavior and what you should do, but we can otherwise we can lend these out and people can watch them directly and they're very, very beneficial. Uh, we do a lot of mailings. Uh, we worked in, in this area with the, the Jackson Hole Conservation Alliance and Wildlife Federation Foundation and Teton County to mail out uh, about 5,000 mailers that we're working on over the winter. Um, we've actually switched away from the fed bears, the dead bears, more to stay safe and keep bears wild. Uh, we've been working on several ads with those local NGOs. Um, we're working a lot with the Teton County uh, ordinance and compliance with regulations against uh, feeding of, of wildlife. And uh, we've done a lot with Park County and Sublet County and Fremont County as well. We do a lot of signage. We do uh, temporary closures. There's a picture of Dusty. Uh, we've had some, like if there's a dead moose on a trail, dead cattle, a dead horse, those are all things that we've dealt with as far as trying to get rid of that attractant, letting people know that there's a potential to run into some bear activity. Uh, we've obviously um, talked about, we've already talked about bear expansion uh, today. I mean, that's a challenge that as we have bears coming into new areas, uh, that we're making sure we're ahead of that and letting people know what can be done. Uh, there's a lot of billboards out there. Um, again, we're not limiting ourselves. As we're, we're using that shotgun approach, trying to get that relevant information out there. When Dusty's not wielding an axe to chop up a... <laughs> I have a pretty cool picture. Huh? That was a dead cow that they actually had to, to figure out how to chop up and get up, chop up and get off the trail. Um, we started a livestock carcass management program up in Park County. And uh, we have a private contractor, uh, Randy Blackburn, you can see here. He's actually had some really significant health problems in the past year. Uh, but that is a lot of, of biomass taken off the landscape. These are, he actually goes in and removes, they call him up, and uh, it, all the money thus far has been through different grants that we acquired in order to move those, that attractant off of the landscape and actually not have a bear come into a ranch. And roughly speaking, we're talking between eight hundred, eight and 900,000 pounds of biomass that's been moved to date with this program. Probably over a million by next year. We do a lot of fencing. And so I think it's important um, when we're talking about the Bearwise program and INE efforts, it's not just handing out mailers and talking to people. It's on the ground, getting dirty, getting bloody, putting up fence. Um, different things like that. We use permanent and temporary fences around bee apiaries, around apple orchards, around everything, anything that we can. Um, we've used them in the, in the Teton County area around uh, outfitter camps. Uh, this is actually in, in the snow and around an apiary. Um, anyone who's done it, it's not fun getting stung. Uh, you can get stung a lot. And, uh, but you know, this year we had a, a lot of this issue. This was more with black bears. Uh, but it's something that we can do to try to reduce that. And I think a really great thing that happened right here in Teton County, uh, you can see Mike Boyce, who's our large carnival biologist here, and Sam Stevens, he's in the back of the room, you can see the side of his face there. Uh, they worked with the county and the, to, uh, and the Forest Service to put up uh, an electric fence around the carcass dump at the transfer station here, which over the years has been a recurring issue uh, that, that brings in bears. So rather than 
doing the after the fact, try to catch the bear, you try to stop it where the actual issue is. Ah, oh, this didn't work. Um, we have updated our, our Game and Fish website, and one of the things we really focused on for our section is our BearWise page. And uh, we try to keep that up to date and um, make sure that information is out there. And I think that one thing that's telling, we had an individual that was a, a hunter that was bit by a bear two years ago, and Brian DeBolt investigated it and talked to that hunter. And he's told him in the hospital um, while they're working on him, and basically said that your website, the information I read about on your website saved my life. And that's pretty important to know. Um, and it's not going to be that way with everybody, but it's good to know that some of that information is getting out there. And a great uh, on-the-ground effort we did this year was we were able to give away 100 free cans of bear spray in the Cody region. Um, they went out in less than one hour. And uh, it was paid for by Wyoming Outdoors and the Stone Country Bear Hunters Association. And uh, one thing that I was wanted to make sure that it wasn't just a free giveaway, we had a survey where we asked people about our educational efforts. What are we doing good? What are we doing bad? And, uh, and we're going to tabulate that and put it together in our annual report, our annual Bearwise report. Uh, but this was a really positive effort, and I think it's something we're going to build on in the future. And these are just some of the major things, and it's focusing here in a, a Teton County. Uh, but again, I already talked about that, the bear education trailer. You know, we go to local celebrations, 4th of July, parades, things like that. We really try to um, make sure that the game and fish is at those events and, and putting out a positive light. Um, so I asked Dusty. He, Dusty's up working. He's actually covering for some conflicts right now up in the, in the Cody region where he would be here. But I asked him roughly how many people he talked to last year. And part of our performance appraisal process is we quite try to quantify that. And he said he talked to roughly 4,210 people. And, uh, but I mean, when, you, when we, we look at our people in our section, I, I would guess between eight to 10,000 directly about.